Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate your time. Hey, since you're one of the guys on this roster that has a playoff resume, um, what will you tell the guys that have not been in this situation, what the experience is like, what to expect? I think it's just that uh, we're getting, we're back to a clean slate, you know, um, it's, the records don't matter anymore. It's back to it's win or win or lose and go home. And, and anybody's got a chance to go as far as, the, as, as they can, you know, and it's, um, it's going to be extra physical, you know, it's, it's um, another step up from regular season games, from division games. Um, um, like I said, a do or die, you, you win and everybody sort of has that feeling like, Hey, we can be the team that can make it. And uh, it's going to be a hard fought battle, but uh, we're excited to be a part of it. That's for sure. Yeah, I know last week was difficult for, for a lot of different reasons. Um, how much do you think the lack of practice time maybe last week affected the, the line and just some of the stops and starts you guys had yesterday? Um, it definitely, you know, it's definitely hard when you don't, you're not able to get into the building and, and go over stuff, but it, you know, it's luckily it's, uh, it was week 17 and, you know, we've been playing together for quite a while now. We we're able to figure quite a few things out, um, and we're able to get the win and, you know, that's all that mattered at that point in time. But, uh, you know, we're excited about the opportunity ahead of us to, you know, play these guys again and have more film to see what we can learn from and, and, uh, see what we can do better. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Nate Ulrich is next. Hey Jack, uh, congratulations. Um, you know, obviously we've been asking a lot of the defensive guys about turning around and facing the Steelers again, knowing they'll have to play Ben Roethlisberger. But what is it like from your perspective, knowing that TJ Watt and Cam Hayward are going to be involved in this one and, and what those players, uh, you know, pose as a challenge to you? You know, those, they're two really great guys, really good players. Um, you know, it's another challenge that they're, you know, with how, how good they, they are at uh, getting after the passer. Um, you know, it's going to be something that's, uh, you know, obviously right in front of me with TJ having to go do that and, and having Cam come in. And, um, you know, it's another challenge, but we're up to the task. You know, it, it's, it's going to take a lot of studying and getting things ready for, uh, this week um, to prepare for it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's playoff football and anything can happen. And, and we're excited um, for the opportunity to play these guys and, and get the Steelers at full strength and show them what we can do. With your offensive line coaches out, um, what, what has it been like with you guys as a group? Have, have you and do the other veterans had to kind of step up and lead the charge and, and how difficult is it knowing that, you know, this week might be more the same with that? Um, you know, it was, it was a little less weird this, this week because we still can virtually talk to everybody. Um, you know, I think it'll obviously be different this week, not having them at practice, but, um, you know, like you said, we, you know, we have some other guys with Joel and JC that, um, you know, really have the grasp of everything and can help uh, uh, lead everybody um, and uh, help lead the offense and make us and help us understand what we have to do this week. And uh, so I, I'm not really, I don't think any of us are too worried about um, not having them there just because we are virtual everything now besides practice. So we're still going to get a whole lot of uh, um, their, te their uh, techniques and talking to us just about the game plan and everything. Thanks, Nate. Steve Dorsch is next. Jack. Looking at uh, this being a road game and understanding that uh, you were in two tough situations last year and you went on the road, how, how difficult was that? Uh, or did you treat those games as just normal games? Or is it really a grind to get through the road games last year in the playoffs? And how different is this year with no no people in the, the stadium uh, at road games? Um, I, You know, it was definitely a grind on the road. You know, last year going into those hostile places and, and – uh, um, but, you know, I think I think what we'll really focus on and what every team really focuses on in this playoff football is um, is running the ball, you know, and, and last year the Titans what we were able to do with the first two games really was uh, run the ball and, and take leads early and uh, dictate how the game went. Um, and, you know, that shut down the crowd and, and made that aspect go away. And, you know, it'll definitely be interesting this year, interesting this year because, you know, it's such a smaller amount of fans. Uh, I believe Pittsburgh still has fans, so uh, as they did earlier in the year. But still, you know, obviously not a full capacity. But um, I think it's just playoff football is, you know, be able, it's going to be cold football. It's it's AFC uh, North football. It's 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 pounding. It's grind. It's it's a team that can control the clock and control the way the game is going. It's a team that's going to win. Hey, Steve. Jeff Shadell is next. Hey, Jack. You just talked about running the ball, and we talked to Kevin earlier. He said he even mentioned. Lightning uh, Nick Chubb's workload to keep him and, and Cream too to keep their, them fresh. So 
Do you get a sense that you guys are going to be running the ball here on Sunday? Um, yeah, I mean, I, that's what we've done. When we've had success all year, it's been running the ball. And I, I don't think we've changed that now. Um, you know, that's always the goal. And I think that's what really the – what offense linemen want to, want to do. You know, when you can run the ball on people, it really uh, – helps you in, the, in all other aspects of the game is when you run the ball well, then play action works well and, and drop back. Some teams are more worried about the run and that, that leads to open passers. And, um, and it really just takes the fight out of a lot of guys when you're running them over in the run game. Thanks, Chef. Dan Lobby, we'll go to you. Hey, Jack. Kevin was telling us earlier that you guys on that offensive line get excited when you're watching film and you see, you know, guys like Kareem, receivers, you know, even Austin kind of get out and make blocks. Are you ever surprised to to see those guys and, and what they can do in the run game and, and when they are out front blocking? Um, you know, it, it, yeah, it's always it's, it is really exciting. You know, when you when you have they kind of spring that, you know, those those runs that go from fifteen to twenty yards, um, those explosive runs. Sorry, my daughter's yelling in the background, but <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, it, it is sometimes, you know, you see them run over guys and you're like, oh, geez, I didn't know these guys had it in them to do that. But uh, it, it definitely gets the whole line going and helps us, uh, I think, just brings another energy to the offense. That's just life working at home. Um, <laughs> yeah. Once, when when yeah. you saw that last run by, uh, by Baker, you know, obviously I know you and Jed were out there as well, but Austin had a big block. Kareem had a big block. Um, were, were those kind of the, the keys to that, to him getting that first down? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, that we call the play where there's a lot of solo blocks on the edge and those are tough. Those are tough blocks. And, uh, you know, those guys stepped up and went to the time that it mattered and uh, it was huge. And uh, if those guys don't make those blocks, we don't get the first down. And uh, I think even on if you go back and watch Nick's long run the first quarter, you see uh, uh, Donovan downfield uh, finishing off a guy just to get him in the end zone. And when you see stuff like that, it just shows um, those, those are the box that are going to come down to the playoffs. Those are the ones that are going to be the ones that win games. And you know, if you can make spring those explosive runs, um, those are really the difference makers. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Scott Patrick, you're up. Hey, Jack, I got two things for you. Um, following up on Jeff's question about the run game, does Pittsburgh's scheme make you guys do anything differently to have success running the ball? Um, And definitely, you know, it, with, the, with their scheme, we have to just – look at it a different, little bit different way. You know, they're a very stout group and we got to find, I mean, I think we obviously try to find ways to uh, get them off the ball and, and uh, get as many double teams and different things as we can just to move that line of scrimmage. But uh, like you said, I mean, they're, they're a good front and uh, they create a lot of obstacles. And it, right now, you know, we're going through trying to figure out ways to attack those obstacles. Like, do they make it tougher to get outside in the wide zone than some other teams? Um. They, I mean, they can, you know, with the ends, with how they how they play up the field a lot. Um, they try to shut that down. So that's one of their goals is, yeah, to, to shut that down and stop us from doing out there. But uh, um, it's also our goal to to beat them at their own game. So uh, it's, a, it's really on us to, to do that. Gotcha. And then with TJ, Mike Tomlin last week said he's from another planet. Um, just what makes him so tough to block off the edge? Um, I, th I think it just really comes down to just – you know his speed and uh he's really he does a really good job i think you know it, it's impressive to see it's i think he does a good job of um studying the teams really the tape you know he can he does a really good job of timing up the cadence and uh, getting off and getting up the field and um you really got to be at the top of your game getting off the ball as well because you know he's going to get full steam going and and you got to beat him to that uh that point thank you thanks scott we'll go to dd king Kabbalah. uh hi jack my daughter has interrupted just about everything all year. So I appreciated that. <laughs> um, Baker Mayfield. I know it's been a very awkward year for bonding or spending time together, but can you tell me one thing that's sort of been a surprise in actually having this year with him? And from the outside looking in, it feels like he has, uh, I hate to say grow up because that sounds patronizing, but that he's sort of evolved a little bit from a few years ago. What about within the season? What's one big difference right now in week 17 from let's say week two? Um, I think just understanding that um, you really don't, you don't have to extend plays all the time, you know, making sometimes extending plays is the wrong thing to do. You know, if this isn't somebody open or um, the pocket collapses, it's, it's okay. Just get, throw the ball out of bounds or, you know, go for a run. You know, you don't always have to try to make the big play. And uh, I think he's done a really good job of that. And I think you can see, um, I don't want to jinx anything, but he just with his touchdown to interception ratio the last few, 
few weeks, you know, it's, it's been drastic and uh, you know, that just goes to his decision-making and, and um, understanding, Hey, you know, we'll live to fight another down. And sometimes that's better than trying to take a deep, trying to force something in. What about just personality wise, you know, before you got <laughs> here versus who he is right now? Um, I'd say, well, just sort of on the funnier side, I never expect him to uh, accept that he has a uh, little man syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> He's accepted that really. Oh yeah. He, he, yep. You can't even make the joke to him now. Cause he just says, yeah, I do. I, I have it. <laughs> <laughs> so when we ask him on Wednesday about this, he will concede. I think so. I, I mean, he conceded to me, so we'll see where his pride's at. But <laughs> All right. Thanks, thank Didi. you very much. We have time for two more questions. Tony Grossi, Nate Ulrich. Tony, go ahead. Hey, Jack, it just seems from the outside watching these last two seasons that uh, what Tennessee did last year to come out of nowhere seems to be being repeated with your new team. Do you have, and, and you know how that team caught fire last year around this time. Do you feel uh, flashbacks to that year? Do you talk to your teammates like, hey, this is what we did last year, so it's right there for us? Anything like that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially, you know, run pretty much the same offense, you know. And, and again, I think it's it's just coming down to run the ball. You know, if you can run the ball and, and uh, take control of that, that game, I mean, it, it, just, it just changes the whole thing. When you get up on teams, run the ball – it, it opens up your playbook. Um, it allows the defense to get after the, the other team's offense. Um, and it's just, it, it's more exciting. You know, you can just, you just see the, 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 the life coming out of other teams when you just can run the ball and, and just take hold of that game. And, and the physicality is you're, you're beating up the other teams and, and you're not really taking as much. And, and I think if, if we can just, we can drive that, that point home is just doing everything we can to, you know, to, uh, take that fight out of every other team. And that's, that's really what's going to uh, take you uh, the long way in the playoffs. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Tony. Final question for Jack goes to Nate Ulrich. Jack, when you uh, talked to us shortly after you signed with the Browns, you were talking about how it was such a goal of yours to, you know, help this team turn it around and make the playoffs. How gratifying is it to, to come from, you know, the tight ends where you had, you know, been in the AFC championship game and, and then be a part of a, a change here in a, in a playoff berth? It's been, you no, know, it's been awesome. You know, I think the most exciting thing is is really just for the city of Cleveland. I mean, to, to have such good fans here and, and to be able to come through and, you know, make the playoffs the first time since, since 02, it's, it's, it's just, it's extremely gratifying. And, um, you know, but it's not, that's not where we want to stop. You know, this team is, is, is very goal oriented and and, uh, and committed to what we want to do, and you know we, we want to win a Super Bowl and bring bring that to Cleveland. You know this was the first step, and uh, we have a whole lot more to do, and, and we're excited for the opportunity that we've uh, put ourselves in here.